Hello and welcome again to Table Talk. I'm Mike Holly, one of the pastors at Asbury United Methodist Church, and we are glad that you are continuing to use this weekly video and reflection guide so that you can gather around the dinner table or small group table to continue to learn and grow from our Sunday morning messages. This past Sunday was Transfiguration Sunday, and our reading was from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. I invite you to listen to how Matthew's gospel describes the transfiguration of Jesus. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, uh, suddenly a cloud uh, overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The account of Jesus being transfigured in front of Peter, James, and John occurs at an important moment within the Gospel of Matthew. Six days after Peter states his belief that Jesus is the promised Messiah and the very Son of the living God, Jesus and these three disciples climb upon this high mountaintop. We can read the transfiguration as an affirmation of Peter's confession, as well as a mark of the transition that is happening within Matthew's Gospel story. Both Moses and Elijah stand out as crucial figures in the Hebrew scriptures. Both encountered God on a mountaintop. Both saw or heard from God. Peter, James, and John see God in their rabbi and free friend, Jesus the Messiah. Not only is this an affirmation of Peter's confession, but it is also a sign that things are shifting towards the suffering and death of Jesus. The long journey to the cross becomes more central after the transfiguration as Jesus begins to prepare his disciples for what he will face. You might think that any other person alive would want to stay on that mountaintop and not walk toward the future, the future that he knew was coming the disciples want to build these temporary structures and stay on the mountaintop longer because of their powerful experience. <laughs> they even forgot about their brothers, the other disciples who weren't with them on the mountain. Let the worship continue and forget about everyone else, they seem to say. Jesus seems to want nothing to do with that. The disciples are shooed off the mountain and they all quickly return to ministry. Jesus sets his face towards Jerusalem and continues on his way. Some theologians call the experiences that we see on the high mountain as divine intersections. They are times and places where God shows up in a powerful way in the ordinary times of our lives. Often these divine intersections are not the goal, but they are the fuel and the nourishment or even sometimes the affirmation that we need for what is about to come next in our lives. Think about your own experiences. Have you ever encountered a divine intersection? How did it prepare you or shape you for what you encountered next in your journey of faith? Why are powerful worship experiences like the one from the Transfiguration story so important for formation so that we can serve others? What happens when we forget that our faith has a purpose and a mission field? Take some time to consider these questions and remember to click on the link below 
to download a Table Talk Reflection Guide with questions and other resources for your conversations as you faithfully worship, serve, and grow.